Hey guys, today I've got a video for you on the all too sticky situation of frozen shoulder. I'm choosing to use a little inflammation highway for this one. Um, and I want to talk about the inflammation highway I'm going to go down, pun intended, about this dysfunction. It is so incredibly vague and the information that is out there just proves how primitive our knowledge is around issues like frozen shoulder, which a lot of people really still don't understand. I'm starting off with some general but equal pressure from the front and the back of the shoulder, giving the shoulder a global awareness. Um, as you can see here, I've got my left hand underneath and I've got my right hand on the anterior aspect into the pecs and I'm giving a good compression, allowing the shoulder to kind of fall away from the rib cage. By definition, frozen shoulder is adhesive capsulitis. So I'm trying to take the shoulder capsule and unadhere it. Once I've given the shoulder a couple of good compressions, I'm gonna take that same grip and add a little jostle to my compression. So I'm just shaking things up a little bit and trying to get things to unstick and to loosen up and to allow the shoulder to have a little bit more space and a little more fluidity. While I continue to shake the shoulder free from its stuck position, I wanna explain a couple of the theories around frozen shoulder. I could really talk about this for hours and I don't have time, so in brief, one of the theories that applies to frozen shoulder is that it is a tendinopathy of all the tendons that surround the shoulder, creating the capsule around this joint that is the most complex joint in the body. So these tendons become inflamed and create a stickiness around the joint that limits its range of motion. Another theory is that it's related to a metabolic syndrome, meaning that the body can't manage the fats and the sugars in the blood creating a chronic inflammation everywhere and because the shoulder is the most complex joint it tends to feel it first okay done with theory on to technique I'm gonna spend a lot of this video doing techniques that trick the brain into allowing the shoulder to actually move again. But first I wanna start with a myofascial stretch across the chest. I wanna make sure that all of the connective tissue that extends from the sternum out to the shoulder can loosen up and allow for movement that might be restricted from any sort of postural discrepancies that can be triggered by frozen shoulder. So with this technique, I'm using the base of my palms to do most of the work and I'm taking my left hand and hooking into the skin on her left side and pulling towards me and then using my right hand and pulling in the opposite direction. With this technique, the fascia that covers the pecs and the sternum can start to break free and loosen up and allow for the shoulders to fall back away from the chest. I'm about to start asking my client to activate movement in her shoulder and obviously with frozen shoulder, movement can be painful. So the movements my client's going to be doing are full movements, but as a therapist, encourage your client to go into these motions as best as possible. It does not have to be the full motion, but even a little bit can trick the brain into telling the muscles to do something they haven't been able to do for a while. I'm starting here with flexion of the shoulder and as she contracts these muscles, I'm sinking down and then as she eccentrically allows her arm to fall back down and lengthening the fibers of the muscle and softening towards the attachment site on the humerus. The combination of pressure with movement changes the way the neurological patterns control how the muscles act. And the whole point of this is to break a pattern that is dysfunctional. So you want to trick the brain into thinking that the muscles can actually do something they're not able to do. Another telltale sign of frozen shoulder is pain right on the coracoid process, which nobody likes their coracoid process being pressed, but this pain can often exist a little higher than normal. So I want to spend some time easing the pec minor very specifically, which I'm doing once the pec major has been softened. And then as I work through these layers in the chest, I want to make sure to sink into the shoulder a little bit and just continue to keep in mind this intention of allowing the shoulder to unstick. I've got my client's arm out at a 90 degree angle from her body because who knew that being a massage therapist required that you knew geometry. So I've pulled my client's arm out and I've done this passively. And a lot of the times with frozen shoulder, you'll find that you can passively move your client's arm into a position that they're not able to do themselves. But nonetheless, if they find it uncomfortable, keep it at a 30 or 40 degree angle from the body. And that does the trick just as much. So with this work, I'm flexing the elbow just a little bit, sinking into the bicep. And as I extend the elbow out, out, sliding my palm up all the way into the shoulder creating a myofascial stretch and my intention here is to sink down into the bicipital tendon remembering that the tendons and the capsule are the tissues that are stuck so my intention is continually to focus on unsticking those tissues Next, I'm gonna move into some eccentric active release work with the bicep itself. 
So as I hold her wrist with my left hand, I'm asking her to bring her wrist towards her shoulder to flex the elbow, and I'm pulling the wrist down, extending the elbow as I compress up into the bicep and all the way up into the shoulder. Even if your client feels like they can't move, encourage them to imagine moving. That can sometimes be powerful enough. I'm doing this again with a static compression into the bicep tendon, and the words I'm using are, as I pull your wrist down, I want you to keep pulling towards your shoulder, but allow me to win. So that force of an eccentric contraction tricks that neurological component into allowing the muscle to actually move, contract and move at the same time, which it doesn't want to do at this point, and the brain has decided that it can't. So all this work is about tricking that communication to allow it to move yet again. I'm offering a little bit of a pin and stretch at the very end of this work here. And again, my demonstrations are a little bit bigger just so that you can see it. All of this work can be done very subtly with small, minute, nuanced movements to help your client feel like there's movement back in the shoulder. Even with this passive range of motion at the end, drawing circles with the shoulder, all of this can be smaller. Just allow your client to tell you what's comfortable for them, but encourage movement and encourage visualization of movement. Speaking of visualizations, I'm lifting my client's shoulder up and finding a good spot into the rhomboids on the medial border of the scapula and then into the pecs on the front. I'm taking both hands and using a specific finger point pressure to connect those two points. I'm asking my client to draw a nice warm light between those two points and as she does that, breathes in and breathes out, I'm going to shake the shoulder away from the rib cage again. All of this is to encourage getting that shoulder unstuck. Addressing frozen shoulder really involves addressing all of the elements that cross over the shoulder to create that capsule. So for this technique, I've got my client's arm up and I'm supporting her elbow with my left hand and using my right hand to start to access that posterior kind of protected element of the glenohumeral joint itself. First, I'm gonna encourage the triceps and the tendons of the triceps to soften down towards the attachment site at the infraglenoid tubercle, which talk about A, sounding like you know your anatomy and B, understanding the intricate levels of what's going on in the shoulder. The anatomy around frozen shoulder is unbelievably important. So of course I'm explaining this all to my client as I go and once I get down into those attachment sites, I'm going to start to manipulate this adhered capsule. As I sink in with my right hand, I'm using my left hand to manipulate the movement of the arm to try to melt those tissues that can become stuck for so many reasons. I was about to start listing them, but I will save you from that and instead just mention that the heart meridian in Zen Shiatsu runs right through here and is considered the protector of all emotions. Enough said. Reason number 927, I love this technique. This is a great move for frozen shoulder. When somebody's got a lot of shoulder pain for whatever reason, bringing the arm across the body allows the shoulder to stay in a neutral position and still allows you to access muscles in ways that feel so relieving. I love this move, but it needs a name. So if you have an idea for a name for this technique, Leave it in the comments below. I would love to hear your thoughts. Okay, so I've pulled my client's arm across her body towards me and let her body roll towards me. I very carefully placed her hand up on her shoulder so as not to touch me in any inappropriate way. And I'm going to spend some time focused on the infraspinatus and the supraspinatus in this position. I'm taking my right hand right now and curling my fingers underneath the spine of the scapula, addressing the upper portion of the infraspinatus. And while I intermittently interject a little passive rotation of the scapula, I'm really going to take advantage of the fact that both of these rotator cuff muscles are elongated in this position. So I'm sinking my fingers in and using some nice long stripping strokes to ensure that those fibers are going to stay aligned. I want to make sure to stop any pain spasm cycle that's happening, any trigger points, any knots very specifically. And there is one famous one right at the upper medial corner of the infraspinatus that can be associated with shoulder pain very notoriously. So I want to make sure that I address that trigger point and communicate with my client and ensure that that is either not there or starting to let go if it is there.
While I'm here, I absolutely want to take advantage of this position to get into the subscapularis. It is that hidden gem that holds so many little triggers to pain that a lot of people can't access or don't understand. And once that is relieved, can be the key that opens up so much information. So with the scapula pulled away from the rib cage, I'm using my left hand here to kind of grasp the lateral border and then sink my thumb down into the subscapularis. And again, coming back to that idea that movement with pressure for frozen shoulder is fundamental. I wanna make sure that while I'm sinking in, I'm using my right hand to move the arm around a little bit. You can make this as big or as small as you want to and have your client give you feedback about what feels relieving, what feels like it's on something particularly poignant, or if all of it feels too painful, continue to find those points that actually do feel relieving. While I'm fleshing out this work, I wanna pontificate for a second about the concept of deep tissue. Deep does not mean digging. I hope I'm preaching to the choir, but deep tissue really just means that you are using techniques to create change. So when I talk about sinking in, it's really dependent on what the client can tolerate, not how far you can dig. At this point, I think you guys know how important I feel it is to move your client into different positions. And so here I've got my client in side lying with the focus of the teres major and the teres minor. The teres major has gained a sassy little reputation for being known as Lat's little because it does everything that the lats do. And I could demonstrate how to manipulate these muscles using each of these three actions, but for now I'm just gonna focus on internal rotation, which means that I'm going to eccentrically create force into external rotation. So as I bring her arm back down to her torso and drop her hand to the ground, I'm gonna ask her to push her hand down to the table as I pull her hand up towards the ceiling. And again, I'm gonna ask her to win because I need to know that I'm really strong. No. <laughs> Just kidding, I really just need this muscle to contract as it's lengthening. That is the whole point and is proven to be effective when it comes to frozen shoulder and adhesive capsulitis. I'm coming back to the same idea that we're tricking the brain into getting these muscles to move in ways they haven't. And exploring the concept of pressure while creating an eccentric force is one of the more effective tools used in manual therapy. So I've repeated that technique a couple of times and now I've just laid her arm down and I just wanna do some softening of all of this tissue that tucks itself underneath the posterior deltoid. So in this position, I'm guiding all of this tissue up and kind of slipping it underneath that posterior deltoid and allowing it to have some softness and giving it some fluidity and allowing that capsule to feel a little bit less tugged at. For this last technique, I'm gonna bring my client's arm up over her head again, and in this side-lying position, you can really access a lot of the muscles that lay on the lateral border of the scapula and hang out in that very protected area of the axillary region that tend to not get stretched out very often, tend to get overworked with minuscule little movements, and tend to need a lot of extra attention. After making sure my client feels nice and safe and secure and tucked in, I'm gonna use my right forearm to anchor under the elbow and pull while my left arm is bracing her hand down to the ground so that the only thing I need to do is lean back and create a nice long lateral stretch. Letting her arm fall back into a nice relaxed position, I wanna encourage that her shoulders stay nice and loose while I do this work. I'm focusing on all these muscles that I've been talking about that kind of converge right in this posterior axillary area and are responsible for holding the arm down towards the side in a very protective motion. So I'm gonna spend some time sinking in and lengthening out these muscles and giving the underneath portion of the shoulder capsule some room to breathe. There's a little bit of a pin and stretch happening here with a myofascial tug at the end to complete the work. I'm bringing the arm up to a 90 degree angle and creating the same technique with a shortened space here. So with my right hand, I'm sinking into a couple of pressure points right into those attachments and I'm using my left hand to move the humerus around a little bit, creating a softer space. This is also an easier way to access the same technique if your client doesn't feel like they can raise their arm all the way up over their head, which isn't always possible for somebody with frozen shoulder. And in this last little bit, I wanna say hi to the deltoids and just pull them away from their underlying structures, giving the entire capsule some nice global awareness and allowing the arm to finally relax a little bit. 